think my uh, most interesting time was uh, I used to be a, a an adventure comedian, not just one that would go to a a club and perform. I never got satisfaction off of having a great show. Hmm. Um, I would always like want to do the extra that other people weren't doing to be remembered. Like I would, uh, like I, at the time I was really adventurous and I would like to run. And uh, I found myself challenging everybody like during the show, after the show, the staff, uh, people in the audience. And I would, I would want to ask them, you know, race me after the show because I'm really fast. <laughs> what? <laughs> And then uh, anybody race you? Yeah, everybody did. Wow! And they all lost. They all lost because <laughs> I was actually I was actually good. So I mean I wouldn't just put a challenge out there just to to do something, but um, I would do that. And then uh, I went to comedy clubs, and there would be waitresses and and staff members that after the show we weren't even really concerned with the show. I mean mm -hmm. we had great shows, but right. like after the show we would. You know, one girl, she literally dressed up like a track star. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ready to race you. Yeah, everybody came. And, and they were like, we're, we're going to do a relay thing, but it's just you, not anybody else. And yeah. I, I raced her, and I mean, she failed horribly. But it was still, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the race. And then I took it to places like Canada. And uh, th this is where it didn't end up good. Uh, I, raced, uh, I raced another comic after the show. And uh, we were racing down the street, a lot of... People from the audience, they were still in front of the, the theater we were at. And then, uh, I mean, as usual, I uh, blew them out. Yeah. Uh, so like, good, good comedy show. Yeah, but is this all right. this y'all talking about this backstage? Like after the yeah. show's going we on? Yeah, like, right. we were talking about, the, I mean, the whole weekend. Gotcha. After after we get paid. Is this before social media or is everybody kind of this posting is, this video? This wasn't long about ago. It? This was okay. in the last, within the last 10 years. Gotcha. But at least about four years, maybe seven years. Gotcha. Um, and then, like, we would, uh, we, we raced. And people watched, and it's same result. I'm a, I'm a mile ahead of this guy. Damn. And then, uh, so you're the quickest comic in these streets, is what you said. I'm the quickest comic I know. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it might be somebody come out and make me tear my ACL, but you know. Yeah. Uh, so so we're racing, and then at this point in time, I hear the whoop, and then uh, I'm like, wow, that's weird. But it, it felt like it was for me, but I knew I wasn't doing anything to hear a police siren. Huh. And what had happened is. This cop, he, uh, it was a, actually a police station across the street huh. from the theater. He made a U-turn, and then he pulled us over, and he, uh, he drew his weapon. He asked us, to, well, he told us, he didn't ask us, told us to freeze. Where are y'all going? Uh, yeah, that's what he said. He said, he said uh, what's going on? Right. And I said, we were racing, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I was winning. And right then, my mind is already going, so right. I'm processing, processing what he's thinking. He's thinking... That either this guy is a hate crime right. going on, this guy is trying to beat my ass. Or he stole ass, some shit. Or I stole something, right. and he's trying to catch me. What time of day is this? This is nighttime. This is oh, after a show. Yeah, you this look a real suspect. Yeah. yeah, we had two shows, but it's Canada, so I don't think none of it. Oh, I, you I've in Canada? People. Yeah, I've raised oh, this shit. is Vancouver. I've raced people mm. there before. Um, but this time was different. I never mm -hmm. raced anybody beside a police precinct. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he pulled us over, and we were like, we're racing. And I was winning. Like, it was a pause, and I said, I was winning. He was like, sure you are. Oh, he I'm going to need backup over here. We got a 10-14. He didn't do that. <laughs> he was confused for a second. And then, like, we, were, we, we had our hands on our hips. We were like, what's going on? He was like, right. oh, okay. And then he just, like, got in his police car, and then he just went down the street and went to the police station. But huh. it, And uh, everybody saw this. And then, and then the club owner, he contacted me. He was like, yeah, I heard you got pulled over last night running. And he's like, is this- First of all, how you get pulled over running? That's what I said. <laughs> it, was, it was embarrassing, but not really, because uh, I mean, I didn't get the acknowledgement that I felt like I should have received yeah. being so fast. But he, <laughs> right. he just automatically thought the worst thing. He's like, hey, man, can't I just have a friendly race at nighttime? Can't right. you just- If it was two white dudes, then they right. just would have been running. Right. But I guess it looked bad. It looked bad. Looking like he took something. It looked God like dang. I took something. So he just let you ride after that? That was it? He didn't let me do anything. I, I mean, there was a million witnesses there. Oh, I mean, okay. like, I they, we had a, it was a thing. It was thing. a thing. Yeah, God. it was an event. But he just wasn't paying attention. He just saw a black dude getting chased by a white dude because right. white dude had Oh, he beat. was white, the dude he was racing. Yeah, ah, man. Yeah, I didn't put mm. that part. I, well, I thought I said Canada. Your ass so. got too comfortable out there in Vancouver. Too, well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's almost like I feel like I'm transparent. Like, I really don't have a color when I right, go places. Right. So, right. So you're just living in the moment. I'm living in the you moment. You seem like an adventure seeker and shit, man. Where are you originally from? I'm from Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Home home of basketball. Home of uh, uh, automobile racing. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff going on there. 
Right I now, was. it's just crime, but you know. <laughs> right, but we home. still know it's still more home. than that. Yeah, yeah, we, we got a legacy. So what was it like growing up there, and then how did you transition to even getting into comedy? Because from what we've talked about even before this, like you right. travel, you've seen a lot of places, you've been yeah. doing this. How did growing up in Indianapolis evolve you went to hitting the stage and doing comedy? You know what? It started when um, I had a job at a uh, comedy club. Uh, I used to have a job at a furniture store. And I got in this accident, and I couldn't work anymore. And I remember saying that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to try that comedy thing that mm. I've been wanting to do for my whole life. Mm. And I, I was looking through this uh, alternative newspaper, and then I looked, and I said, if I see an ad in the paper mm. to work there, then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna get a job there. That's what I'll do. So actually, I just didn't see an ad. I seen a whole a full page Spray layout. Spray on there. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, I applied. And... When I applied, I immediately got hired. Uh, they said I look scary. I don't know if that's a compliment. Damn. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment. Indianapolis is not something. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I was from Vancouver well, where the thing uh, yeah, was. But yeah. now Indianapolis. I, 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 think they, I think they meant it in a nice way, but... <laughs> but the heart was in the right place. I understood it. I understood it. They, they were saying that I looked intimidating. So Because I think I, I was applying for a door position. That's what it was. Mm. So within like... Immediately, I think I, I got like a cook position, mm. and then immediately I was assistant to the general manager after that. Okay. So then, like, I, I had keys to the building. I had, nice. And they had two locations. So nice. They uh, didn't know what they was getting. You over here now? They you didn't know. They didn't know what I was doing. Right. So I had this plan. So I took acting classes. Nice. I took. Uh, I took. Uh, I started modeling. Nice. I started. Uh, I started getting like little modeling jobs for JC. In, all in Indianapolis. All in Indianapolis. Nice. That's right. And I did all this at the same time to teach me how to act because I knew I needed to start working on my act. I didn't know how to walk. I didn't know what right. to think. Um, so I, I did that. And then like in between like uh, dark days of the club when there wasn't any comedy going on, like, you mm. know, I was just getting deliveries, whatnot. I, I would uh, I would run in there. I would turn on the lights in the showroom. And then I would go in there and I would work on these jokes that I had. And then... Uh, then somebody would show up, they'd be like, hello, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Uh, one day. And I just kept doing it, I kept doing it, I kept doing it. And I never told anybody, and I would work the door, and I never told anybody gotcha. that I was going to uh, do comedy. They kept saying, man, you're so funny, you should be a comedian. I was mm. like, ah, I'm about to get this contest here. I just didn't, haven't said anything to anybody yet. Gotcha. I haven't gotten myself together. So uh, eventually I did, I did some, some things for the radio station. It was a Jamie Foxx contest. Oh, host, okay. Host, when he came in town, uh, I won uh, a couple different rounds. Nice. And then by the time that the contest started for where I worked at, uh, I entered on the last date that you can enter. And I mean, I blew everybody away. I blew everybody away. Wow. Uh, the next round, I blew everybody away nice. again. And then, the, then it was the finals. And then um, I got blown away. Oh, <laughs> I snap. Blown. You I was didn't on have a show. Yeah. I didn't have a show, man. <laughs> yeah. All I had was a, I had a performance. I had this right. theatrical thing. Right. Before Dave Chappelle had his thing, yeah. I had a friend of mine follow me with a camera, act like we were walking up, and he was following me out the car, up the building, right. through the hallway, and I had somebody shine like a flashlight. Oh, you had a setup. You had a setup. whole show. Yeah. I had a fog machine because oh, this guy was doing this. He came out like, like princess. Yeah, yeah, I did. And then I came out, the, since I worked there, I, could, I had access to the building, oh, so I came out a whole shit. other door, had a video screen. <laughs> oh, it was shit. crazy. And uh, I had 20 minutes for this contest. Damn. Funniest person in Indianapolis. And man, the first five, I was killing it. Yeah. And in 10 minutes, you know, it was getting a little tougher. Right, right. And then by 15, wow. uh, I was waving a white flag. Yeah, like, you're trying to figure out what they're talking about. How the was, ladies doing? It, right? was, it, was, it wasn't even that good. It was <laughs> damn, bad. It was damn. bad. So um, needless to say, I didn't win the contest. I came in like uh, maybe a fourth or something like that. Gotcha. And then uh, I had this thing where I had stripped at the end. And wait a I minute. Know, I know down to <laughs> down to a thong. I saw somebody else do it on Def Comedy Jam. I was like, ah oh, man, I could do something like that. And I, I wrote something like that for my show. <laughs> and I mean, that was cool, but it didn't really, it wasn't comedy. And a, and a guy at the time he told me, he's like, hey man, you don't have to do anything like that. You're super funny. Why would you do something like that? Uh, you know, you're way more better of a comedian than that. So mm, So you put your shirt on and then you said <laughs> I never I never did it ever, ever, ever again. Wow. And uh and that was the start of, I knew I could be naturally funny, but my issue was uh, not having, uh, not being able to uh, write material. So I had jokes, but I didn't write material. Gotcha. So then I, I began my, my journey to uh, develop and act. Kind of work them out and kind of yeah. just work them out on stage. That's yeah. dope. So what was the, the, the pivotal moment? Because every comic kind of goes through that. I'm doing open mics. Uh, my man told me to come do his show. Okay, now I'm doing this show. And then you have a moment to where, I can sustain a lifestyle doing this. Was there a, 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 
opportunity in particular, or did you just kind of risk it out and just randomly kind of float around here until you were able to kind of sustain and take care of yourself, or was there something that happened? This is a bad story. <laughs> the story is not, it ends well because I'm here, but this yeah. is how to start off. So um, there's a situation, there's a conflict of interest in this club I worked at, mm -hmm. so uh, I did no longer work there. And then uh, at the time, uh, I uh, dated, which was my first wife, I dated her. And uh, she was the manager of one of the, the venues, and she had, had this good rapport with a lot of uh, comedians, headliners that came there. Okay. Some of them famous uh, still to this day. So she was a plug. She, she was. A, she was. She was wow. a plug. Wow. What, she what, what did plug. she do? She was. She was the manager at the club. Okay, gotcha. And the, uh, they had two clubs, and she was the manager of one of the locations. Damn. So I. Uh, so she. Uh, a lot of them had met me, and um, and so then she was like. Uh, you know, like he doesn't work at the club anymore. Could you, you know, help him out? And it was, it was incredible. I must have made somewhat of an uh, uh, impression on them because, sure. as a comedian, you just don't put your neck out there, especially right. guys that were on this level. Yeah. So one guy gave me a list of clubs he referred me to. Another guy gave me this. Another guy gave me that. I mean, they gave me so many different gifts. It was mm -hmm. so so bizarre how they gave me these things. And every time they did, I, I completed the mission. Like I I I done what I was supposed to do, and so. I maybe had just a few opening gigs, hosting mm -hmm. gigs, right. and then I never really hosted. I never had that ability to uh, say I did that. Right. So I just went on the road as a feature pretty much almost instantly. Almost like probably too quick if you're just a regular comedian. Right. But for some reason, I put it together. I don't know I don't know how that happened. Sure. Was and it I, somebody specifically who said, hey, you can come in? Work with me, or did you no. just work it and grind and it out? My name kept getting around. Nice. My name spread so quick. All was, in Indianapolis still. No. Or you moved to? I was st I was still Stella. in Indianapolis, but I, I went on the I went on the road. Place. Yeah, gotcha. I, I went out further. I was doing showcases late at night. Like uh, I would go do showcases like at clubs that were within a four hour radius of Indianapolis. I would do my day job. Gotcha. I was an AV AV guy, and then um, I would get in the car, go showcase, come back home. Like audio visual yeah. stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, that cool, was cool. my last real job I had before I did stand up full time and um and they let me freelance they let me I, like I remember when I uh when I worked there I said I'll be here for like a year right. no two two to two and a half years they right. said and that's what happened I was like I'm gonna quit I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be a comedian yeah and they said uh okay right and then we had a good relationship and then at one point in time uh it happened to be about two and a half years wow and that's when that kind of stuff started happening right and then uh they said um I went in with uh, to um, to my boss, and I said, "Hey, we probably need to talk. We probably need to talk and discuss my future with this company." Mm. He says, "Okay," and uh, we did. And I said, "Well, I told you guys I'd be here for like two two and a half years because I was going to pursue stamp comedy." And uh, he said, "Okay." I said, "So that time is coming." He said, "Okay, mm. so when are you leaving us?" And I said, uh, "I guess they thought I was going to say thirty days or right. two weeks." I said, "Tuesday." <laughs> wow. <laughs> And it was wow. like Friday or when it was like the wow. very it was a week prior to that. Wow. It, was, it was very soon. Wow. And then they said, "Was it okay. easy to make that decision?" Very easy. Wow. Because at one point in time, I booked two full months of work, August and September. Wow. And I didn't have anything else booked but August and September. And I said, "I'm going to put everything into August and September." Wow. And that led to that. That led to that. That led to that. That and momentum all, started to build. Exactly. And yeah. they also let me freelance. They said, "Okay, well, we'll do you one better. Oh, we'll nice. take your insurance away from you." And we'll bump up your salary, nice. and you can come in here oh, when you're not, man. whenever you're not performing. You can come in here, and you'll get your check. You can get delivered to your house, so you can do this. Nice. They gave me all these perks, and I was nice. like, "Wait a minute, so I don't have I I, I have a safety net, right?" And, uh, and you know, human resources, everybody they were down with it, so I did that, and then uh, I went on the road, pretty much, and I started featuring, and then I got bumped up to headlining. That was wow. way premature. I wasn't ready. I wasn't wow. ready. When was this? I, I can't remember it, but it was in the first four years of my career. Gotcha. It was it was way too fast for a normal comic, but sure. uh, I just kept meeting these different plugs. Right. And everybody I kept meeting, they had faith in me. And then uh, the first time I, I think it was in Arkansas, the first mm -hmm. time I headlined, and and the guy he was going to tape a special for BET, and he booked this show, this wow. club, and uh, it was in Hot Springs where Bill, Bill Clinton grew up, grew up at. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, uh, yeah, I need somebody to fill in and. You want to do it? And I was like, I mean, I wanted that money. Right. Of I'm not gonna lie about that. But of I was course. very, I was very modest, and I was like, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to do it. I, I don't have enough time. I, I only have this amount of time. Mm. And he was like, Yeah, you can do it, man. You'll, you'll be fine. Right. And I was like, Are you sure? He's like, Yeah. Right. And some kind of way, he, I don't, he didn't do hypnosis, but he convinced me. Right. He convinced to me to believe in yourself. 
He did, it. and yeah. I did. And I went there, and uh, I think my brakes went out on the way there. Like, mm. it was a bunch of crazy stuff. Damn. It was a bunch of crazy stuff that happened that, that, that trip, but uh, I was there, and it was a, it was a, it was a, uh, what do you call those? A, I want to, not, is it a mobile home or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, like RV or something? No, nah, it was mobile home. Mobile home, okay, mobile gotcha. Home. Ain't no wheels was, on that. Yeah, there were right. no wheels on it. It, right. was, it was two a, steps, they had two steps. It was an old school steps. one. It was an old school one. Oh, yeah. The single wide. Yeah. I couldn't picture it. And then, uh, so this guy, he owned that, he owned that club, he owned that mobile home, he owned a liquor store right there, and he owned a strip club in town. Gotcha. So I go there, right? Right before the show, it's two days. This is my first time headlining. Uh, right before the show, I'm, I'm about to walk to the uh, from the, the trailer, mobile home. Right. To uh, right across the parking lot to the club. Right. Well, I get pulled over. What? Yeah, walking. Wow. And it's the second the, time. And at the time, and that was a, the first time was the more modern story, but right. this time was like way back before when I, I was wow. married to my first wife. and. I think she was with the kids in the trailer. Wow. And then I had literally started walking across the parking lot, and then I get pulled over. I mean, the full car, and then another car comes. I'm Damn. like, how did this Indianapolis. Happen? No, this is in Arkansas. Oh, it's in Arkansas. This is my Damn. first time headlining. Yeah, down yeah. south. Ugh. But I was just walking across the parking lot. Yeah. It was a small parking lot. That's all it take. It was all it took. Uh, <laughs> so they said that I fit the description Damn. of somebody who had just robbed a liquor store that was owned by the same club that I was going to, wow. which I was going to perform at. And I was like, what? And it was an old lady. She looked like Aunt B from Andy Griffith. Yeah. And she had the bun hair. So she called back up. She saw me, She did hit me with the shoulder thing. There it is. I need a 426. See there? There it is. And, and I was like, what? what's the 426? Right. And I was freaking out. I'm like, well, what's going on? Like, what did I do? They's like, right. yeah, uh, you fit the description of somebody who just robbed a liquor store. I was like, what are you talking about? Right. And I think I actually been in that liquor store earlier or whatever. But it wasn't me. <laughs> Damn. So then, uh, you know, people start coming out. The bartender, and I had already checked into the club earlier. Damn. So the bartender had to come out. And she was like, and uh, I think everybody was trying to side defend me. Because right. they, they knew that I wasn't. It was like, he's wearing the exact same thing. And then, uh, they used to say, uh, I wasn't charged. And they, and they apologized. Ah, that's to me. some yeah. whack shit. Being yeah. black in America. I know. I was just oh, walking across do. the parking lot to... And everything that was involved in the situation yeah. was owned by the guy who hired me. Wow. I mean, not the person who hired me, wow. but the person who had owned all those buildings. And That's crazy. Yeah, but nothing ever came out. I've been pulled over a million times. I was just about to ask, you know, moving so freely as you have throughout mm -hmm. all these years around the country, because I've, you know, I moved around a little bit, but not as often. I haven't done mm -hmm. tours and moved from all these cities and states. And even when I go down south to this day in Louisiana, Texas, sometimes riding through some of these streets and neighborhoods, it's kind of like, you know, you got that anxiety a little bit. You know, it's an uneasy feeling. You don't feel welcome. And it's just, it's, it's out of pocket, out of place, man. So how did you, you know, what motivated you or how did you, you know, uh, or was it just a fun experience and you just kind of dismissed those things when they, when they, when they happened? Or was well, it a little bit difficult to move around like that alone? You know, I don't, I don't know if you had family that was supportive of what you were doing or was this just you and out here against the world trying to make things happen? That's, that's you know what? Here's the deal. You know when people say I don't see black and white? Right. I think I'm one of those real people. <laughs> like, I, I'm real to the T about that because... Yeah. My first best friend was white, and I never- Mine too. His I name never, was Dylan. <laughs> mine was uh, PJ. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Shout out <laughs> to PJ actually, and Dylan. That's a, that's a very white name, Dylan. Dylan I, is I, very, very white. It. Shout out to Dylan. Uh, there was no, uh, shout out to PJ. There, there was no, <laughs> so I never really had that block, yeah. you know, and I, and I dated white girls, you know, like growing yeah. up, and so it was never that thing. For you. For me, yeah. because yeah. <laughs> I am from the hood, so I yeah. have hung around hood people, yeah. that I st and I still continue to talk to this very day. Yeah. And like sometimes they'll see my show, they'd be like, man, they'll tell somebody about my show, and they'd be like, he was up there saying this and that, yeah. and this and that. And then white people, they were just laughing. I'd have been so afraid. I'm like, what are, what are you afraid of? Right. Like, but I didn't get it, because I wasn't in that world, because I didn't right. think like they thought. So yeah. I've always been the one of my friends that thought like, Different, I guess. Right. right so, right. Uh, so I, I go and I'm and I'm doing. I'm hanging every time I go to different towns. I'm hanging with different people. Gotcha. Uh, I would attract crazy people. Yeah. I would attract uh, uh, physically, and mentally handicapped people. Yeah, yeah. I would attract old people or mm -hmm. mature people at my shows. Uh, it was 
misfits. I would attract those at my shows. And yeah. I don't mean like I would attract them. Like and they, then you'd race their ass. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, would, they would be really attached to me. Yeah. And uh, I, guess, I guess the way I would write my show, they felt connected. And then after the show, when, we, when we're talking, you know, you're going out and I'm selling merchandise, whatever, yeah. then you could, uh, you know, there was always connections or I would sure. touch different people in audiences. Like sure. uh, one couple, who I, they're not a couple anymore, but when I met them, this guy had lost his wife and his mom mm. all within a couple months. And then ironically, he came out with his then girlfriend and somebody she had worked with her job. They had seen me the night prior mm. and they told her they went to the show. So she decided to bring him out to get him in good spirits. Mm. And uh, he, he, had, he had tried everything. Everything was, he was, his heart was broken. He lost his only mm. child. He lost his mom. And he was his mom's, you know, kid, you know, then, I mean, he had other siblings, but he was his mama's boy, you know. Right. So uh, he seen my show. And that particular night, I guess for some reason, I was gravitated towards him. I didn't know anything about this. Yeah. And then I was directing my material towards him. Yeah. And it pulled him into it. And then after nice. the show, he told uh, the lady he was dating, he's like, I want to... I want to start being part of the world again. Like I broke, wow, broke that barrier. His thing. Yeah, yeah I had a breakthrough, barrier. and yeah. that's the that's the power and the magic. I'm glad you brought mm -hmm. that up because sometimes we as comedians we don't give ourselves enough credit. Mm -hmm. We're so we get so caught up in what we want to accomplish, what we want to do, what we're looking toward. Mm -hmm. We have a gift to be able to change people's lives and, and, that's the, what and their mood about. and their energy. So yeah, that's that's, that's what the, I I get out of it. I don't. I never was into it for like to win the contest or to be in TV. Yeah, I would want to be on TV for I want that money. Sure. But I want that bag, but I don't have to have it and I'm I'm cool. I can stop whenever I want to. Right. It's my passion, it's my dream. But I love the fact that we can some people come to comedy clubs after or comedy shows after a funeral. Right. You know, and so we are there in place for people who, who don't have anything else afterward. And 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 if people who want to get their ass, you know, raced on after the show, you know, be there <laughs> right. for that too. Right, I, you can I get that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would explore. I would do anything. If it's a zoo in a different town, I would always explore the zoo. And that was my thing. I would go in town, and if I'm there at least two days yeah. or more, then I would go out and I would immediately explore the town. I would get in there early enough, and nice. I would go to a zoo. And I had this, like, silent critic thing I would do. I didn't turn it in anybody, but I just <laughs> kept track of all the zoos. I've been to so many nice. zoos. And then I would... Um, I would rate their facilities, you know, if they should be a zoo, yeah. you know, like, are they are they very educational? Yeah. Could this, does the zoo even need to be here? Right. You know, because right. these animals, like, I'm an animal person, so right. these zoos, so I started writing jokes about animals. Nice. And, like, uh, and I would, and that's how I would do it. I would start my set off uh, by getting people's attention by naming off something, not like other comics where I would talk about, you know, the... So I mean, I did this at one point in time where I talked about like the, the dirty part or the sure. rough part or yeah. whatever. But then I started going to specific things. And then I would write specific jokes about mm -hmm. that specific thing in that mm -hmm. specific town. Right. And then they knew that I was there right. because I'm describing it to the T. Right. And so then they let down their guard and it yeah. didn't matter what color I was. Got them in your hand, what man. I looked about. Yeah, I, right. had, I had them the whole time. And I could do whatever I wanted at that point. Right. So... That's was one of my common that's practices. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope, man. So it set me aside from everybody else. So obviously traveling a lot, hitting a lot of comedy stages. Uh, what's the next thing? What what still left do you have on your, you know, list Everything. to accomplish or that you want to do? Everything. I want to do whatever whatever is actually. I can't believe somebody's calling me now. <laughs> right of all times. Right? I told y'all not to call me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> any anything that that is out there, I feel like. Uh, COVID redefined a lot of everybody. People that were something yeah. are, yeah. where are they? Yeah. People that were on the brink of breaking that, that plateau. Pushed it, up against the wall now. Pushed up against the wall. Yeah. And people that deserve a chance are rising. Yeah. And, it's, it's, it's a new, and it gives everybody hope. COVID gave people hope. It took a lot of people from us. And unfortunately, right. that had to happen. I mean... You know, we we can't keep everybody here all at the right. same time. And then you see somebody like Cicely Tyson die or somebody, you know, right. that caliber or Betty right. White. She's not dead. Right. Please, Betty. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, they'll pass away and they'll be like, right. oh, going too soon. Like, they were 94. Right. Like, they they served their purpose. Yeah, right? they, they served their purpose luck. and they have to move <laughs> on to something else. Maybe yeah. they need to sh they have a show sign up in heaven. I don't know. But, yeah, that's what's up. you know, we all have to be prepared for the next. That's what COVID taught us. Yeah. We have to be prepared for the next thing. Right. What would you do if stand-up comedy stopped today? It's always been a movie. Yeah. It's always been a movie. What yeah. would you do if you couldn't go outside anymore? It's always been a movie. Right. But now, you know how you lead those those disaster movies or something like that? Right. And you're like, oh man, that'd be crazy if that really happened. Right. We used Here to say we that. are. Pre-COVID, we used to say that, but yeah. now 
We live in this shit. Yeah, yeah, we live in it over, <laughs> over and over. And I just don't want to go outside and then you can't say anything. Yeah. And I tell my son that, my stepson, I'm like, hey, man, you really need to put down that controller because, matter of fact, you want to watch The Quiet Place tonight. <laughs> you know what right, I mean? Like, I, right. if, I have to, if I have to really show you what it's like, right. if I have to scare you, right. then I will because I want you to respect. Experience life. The, yeah, this is, right. this is out here for you. And I don't want to get into a thing like, remember that movie Wally? Where people oh, yeah. start getting lazy, it was robot, yeah. and then nobody wanted to pick up and move. Yeah, yeah it'd be nice to have a flying car. Thanks, Elon Musk. But you know, yeah. I'm cool going, you know, smacking right. tops. You get a Cadillac and, and yeah. stay, you know what I'm saying? I, right. I'm, you know, it's certain <laughs> things that I need to have in my life. Like, you know, like living out west, yeah, this is it's super chill out here. Right. But I don't have the things that I had in the Midwest. Like, like I don't I don't have a weed dealer anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I can just go to a store. Right. And it's kind of like so. That's yeah. the best part. That's yeah, easy piece. That, that is. Store right in. Let me but just I go around. Like, I, I miss the old days. I miss showing up and meeting somebody and they not showing up. Right. And, right. And calling me, say go to my mama's house. I miss right. all that stuff. I miss. Those are the things that kept me humble. Yeah. But so I always try to make sure that I, I give back and I, I just keep everything balanced because it's more fun. And it helps more people, and it keeps comedy going because one, if if I don't help, right. if I don't start passing out torches, right. then then there's nothing left. You know what I mean? Our art, right. our art dies. So I'm always out at a show. If I'm not performing, I like to go out and watch shows sometimes. And some people think just because I show up that I want to get on stage. No, I want to learn too because right. you I can never not well. learn enough. Right. And then these young comics, they're doing different things and different topics, and they're yep. working stuff different. And then I'm like, oh yeah, you know, and. It just enhances my thinking. You know? Right, exactly. So it's some people are, are they have egos. Well, if I ain't going up, then I'm not showing up. Gotcha. That's not always my thing. My thing is if it if nobody in the audience shows up, then at least that you have me there. Right. And then you know I, I'll do what I do, and then I'll just pop out. I'll Batman out. You know I don't I don't ever say bye. I'll never say hello. I'm here. I just randomly come in and I say. I took up people. Right, and dip on out. Yeah, like I a shadow man. Yeah. I would move like that too, yeah. man. Especially not being from LA. Right. I would move solo. Mm -hmm. I would be out and same thing, hit a club, take some, you know, you know. Eventually they'll remember your out. face because you're popping up. Right. It's hard to remember somebody who is always around right. sometimes. But my thing is if you pop up enough, right. Then eventually, yep. you know, it's like a I was in a park the other playing disc golf with some friends and this gopher kept coming out the ground. Mm -hmm. And I before then I kept saying, where are all these mounds on this course from? <laughs> yeah. Like I and you know I've seen Caddyshack. This is a good f favorite movie of mine, but right. I've never seen a gopher in real life. Yep. And then we've seen this gopher just pushing up dirt, and that's just the things that you don't you don't even recognize yeah. until you they, just, because they become a part of that environment exactly. and that culture and that community. Exactly. I like what you did there. Yeah. I yeah. see how you tied it together. Yeah. I'm a, so I'm, I'm a, a gopher. I'm about to start. I'm about to start <laughs> selling analogies. That's what I think my there next thing is. I'm gonna sell analogies. Uh, and you know, people that, that can't put a sentence together, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, hey man, you trying to buy some analogies? Yeah, I you got you. I mean? You know, Google's you. hiring. Right, there Look you go. There you up. go. There you go. Well, I got another question, man, before we get up out of here. Um, what is something about yourself that most people don't know? Or what would you like for people to know about you? Because obviously there's a certain you know status that we think we are at, or people may have this perception of us. Is there anything that people may not know about you or should know? Um... I am a, I'm a fun person, but I'm a, a uh, I'm one of those kind of people. Like eventually, I shut down. Mm -hmm. Like all the energy that I give you. Yeah. Like eventually, it's almost like uh, uh, the Green Mile. Yeah. You know, after or that power girl. Yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes <laughs> when I suck in so much power. Yeah. Like when you don't see me for a while. Yeah. Is I'm sick. I'm like. Oh, yeah. I, I you got that I'm weak. Yeah. My powers are gone. Yeah. Send me, take down. me back to my myself. <laughs> right. And so, uh, you know, I I always enjoy. I'll, I'll always be here to help people. I always be here to guide people if they don't have that that beacon because you know recently uh, I dealt with a situation where I needed people and. I didn't know that I had so many people. I, mm. I had been doing it so naturally. Right. Um, Suffering alone. Yeah. And going through it alone, which especially in our communities, yeah. we do. We don't talk. We don't yeah. have that. Yeah, yeah, And then, uh, so, so I had like a moment where I had a touch with suicide a couple last uh, week and a half. And oh, wow. uh, I had a lot of people flooding my inbox, wow. flooding my inbox. And like some people, they would love, that was my, that was my one 
moment where I hit a, a piece of fame. Sure. Because I hit fame just because people were wanting to help and they mm. wanted to intervene and stop me. Mm. And they said, no, you can't, you can't take this from us. You can't take you from us. We need you here for us. And then it was people saying, I never met you before, uh, but blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I know people that you know. Uh, people would tell me stories how we met. Uh, one guy said, yeah, I walked in. I was, I was, you were walking out of a club and I was, I was handicapped. And I was limping back into a club and you wanted to support me. So I went in there and seen your show. Uh. And you saw my show and you supported me. You talked to me after. It's so many stories and situations where people, and I didn't forget these stories. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think about them, and I became very you humble. Lose track of the like, magnitude yeah. of those they stories. Said, they said you changed my life, yeah. and I, I had to keep clicking. I just got through. I had hundreds of inboxes wow. of people trying to stop me from suicide, and wow. I thought, man, that's like a, that's bigger than any legacy I could ever paint because I gave people hope, I gave right. people a voice, and I, I I was one of the people I would I would tell my wife I would never want to. Uh, express anything in my personal business on social media. I wouldn't sure. have my kids exposed or my family because I wanted to keep business right and, and my life separate. Because uh, my son, he actually has the same name I do. Mm. So if you find legacy, me, then, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you can find him. And right. he looks just like me. So, uh. it's, so I would always want to keep them separately. Uh, but I paid a lot for, I, I, I gave a lot for stamp comedy. Like I, some people say they, they sold their soul. I didn't yeah. sell my soul, but to, to do my dream and, and to also uh, just keep it real, yeah. it ended up taking a toll on my family mm. and my kids. And yeah. I think if, like in, a, in the end thing, like uh, maybe down the road, they'll find out that, you know, that you do fight for your dreams because there's nothing else if you don't have dreams. Right. Uh, but it took, uh, sometimes I would think they would think that I wasn't there for them. Yeah. But they That's used a to, big but, sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, but they used to be on the road with me. They were on the road when they were two weeks old, 10 days old. Like my kids were a big part of my career. And then right. whenever I wasn't for touring, I would always be with my kids. But, right. you know, um, I want people to to really just sit there and do your dream. And and if, if you're going to be this particular comedian, then be that comedian. You've got to own that style. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, this isn't about you. It's about... Everybody else. That's what comedy's about. If it was about you, then as soon as you make it to the top, then you're up there by yourself. And then you're going to need some regular people to hang out with. Right. You know what I mean? Like millionaires and stuff, that they only hang out with each other for so long before right. they have to hang around regular people to make them feel like they're anything because they just have money. That's the only thing that separates them. Right. So I just I just want to, I want everybody to, to any always advice? get back. And I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm really curious as any advice, because obviously you had your family that had somewhat been compromised or, you know, burdened by you pursuing your dream. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm married and I've been with my high school sweetheart for years. I got an eight year old. Wow. So I'm kind of in a similar, you know, place where you're having to devote time to, to try to find that balance mm -hmm. for, for whatever. But again, I'm not touring. I'm not in these streets right. yet. So is there any advice that you would give or is there any yeah, advice that you can have? Because honestly, somebody's going to be hurt somebody, for you. Somebody's gonna miss out. Somebody's right. gotta give. So, so I right. heard an interview with LL Cool J one time, and they said, "How is you? How are you able to be so successful?" He said, "I kept a balance. I kept a balance of career, and I kept a balance of family. Yeah. If any one of those right. teeters off, right. then you're gonna be the other one's gonna suffer very, right. very, and it's gonna end up running both of them. Right. And so I make sure I keep that balance. So um, as I mature in comedy." Uh, I'm, and I'm a Libra, so I always have uh -huh. to keep things balanced. So I make sure that um, you just go out there and work hard, man. Yeah. Don't listen to anybody, but listen, just have a dream. Just yeah. keep keep going because at the end of the day- It's your legacy too. It's your legacy. Right. Like my, my kids, like if I, wasn't, if I wasn't doing comedy, then I would be somewhere working. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want them to know that they, they actually can do something and you can have it because I mean, Right. Donald Trump was president. Right. You know, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a governor. Right, Jess right. Ventura was governor. Like people, that, a lot of people, when they put their mind to certain things, yeah. they accomplish certain things. Tyler Perry has studios, you right. know. But if you just don't fight for anything or you just do, because, and then I explain it to them like, uh, well, you know, military. Yeah. People who are married to military people, people who are married to politicians, Sacrifice. people who are married to truck drivers who provide services throughout right. this whole country. They keep this, truckers right. keep this world moving. Thanks. If it isn't for people like that, mm. somebody's going to have it. entertainment in general, basketball right. players, football players. That's true. You know how much pressure that is right. to a singer, anybody, anybody who's successful, 
they're entertaining the world at masses, right? And somebody is going to sacrifice for that, right. and it's it's hard. You can't give yourself to everybody. You can't give yourself to everybody. So gotcha. if if you're doing that, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but it's going to be a hurt family sometimes. Gotcha. And then eventually, hopefully, that person can retire or yeah. slow things down, and, right. and then maybe the kids will get it. But the kids will they'll have their their thing when they grow up. You of know, course. well they'll be gone, and you can't be a perfect parent, right? Especially being in entertainment or anything, but. The best you can do is just keep praying and keep yeah. and just keep working hard and make sure you have something to show for. Like I don't mean like say you were on this TV show, that right. TV show, but just you know like even the company that you keep. Like everybody that surrounded me or that surrounds me, they're my friends yeah. or true friends. Like I have so many friends yeah, that yeah. are we've done so many things together, and it was all because I treated them like human beings. Right. And I entertain them, and I invite them into my world. And I never, and I never shut the door. I just left the door open. Like, yeah, man, you can just leave whenever you want to. Right, that's dope, man. We yeah. need more people like you and For more sure, comedians man. like you, bro. I appreciate you taking the Thank time. You, I man. feel like I had an Oprah Winfrey moment. I'm right, be like, right. Hey, give me some Kleenex. <laughs> we breaking barriers, man. Please let the people know where they can follow you and keep up with you and continue to follow your journey, man. Don't you uh, second guess yourself anymore. You definitely still have more chapters to write. I and we are all looking forward to those chapters that are con con going to continue. So, uh, yeah, man, we're glad that you were here to show us apart, and we can't wait to see what you have going on next. Please let people know where they can keep up with you. Thank you. You can find me at chrisshaw.com, uh, K-R-I-S-S-H-A-W. I forgot to spell my name. Uh, check out my son, Makai Shaw. He's uh, he's an artist. He's uh, he's 10 years old. Uh, oh, I, I, I have five. Me and my wife, we have nine kids together, but I have, I have five kids. My wife has four kids, but my youngest son, Makai, he's uh, 10 years old, and he uh, recently became this artist. Um, like singing, rapping? Uh, I don't know. Uh, art? Uh, his uh, his stepdad is his is his producer, and he's yeah. like, uh, he had, it's, it's kind of, it's, he's uh, he's singing, but it's like auto-tune, but nice. it's like when I first heard it, I was like, yeah, and then and next thing I know, I'm singing this song the whole time. I'm going to this video, right? Yeah. And then I go back to my hometown, and I visit him. And then I start seeing people that was in this kid's video, right? Wow. And then I was like, hey, man, is that that kid that was in your video? He's like, oh, yeah, that's another one, right? And, <laughs> and I noticed these kids. He got a little name for himself already. Had, they had the same thing on in the video as they did on the streets. Wow. And so he had a girlfriend. <laughs> Wore their best outfit. Yeah. And he had a girlfriend in the video. And, wow. it turned, and so when I saw him, he was like, hey, daddy, uh, I left my phone in the car. Wow. And then he gets his phone. He says, yeah, this, uh, since we've been gone... I've already got 21 text messages. I was like, oh, and I didn't, and I didn't know. He 10? I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even ask him about the text message. I was like, oh, that's that's cool. And then uh, my wife said, oh, was that your girlfriend? And he was like, yeah. What? And he was like, uh, I was like, oh my god. He's like the girl in the video. I said, oh. He said, and I think she likes me in real life. Man. I was like, oh my god. And Live I your dream. I became one of his name, yeah, Makai. Makai, Makai Shaw. Shaw. Makai. <laughs> That's what's was, up. Oh man. So he's so, he's got a few videos out, and he's got a YouTube channel. Um, I don't have him tagged yet, but oh, he gonna ride you for that, man. Why you ain't telling him on YouTube? I know. Man? You forgot. This I enough. mentioned it. You can find him. <laughs> with, I follow him, and he follows me. That's but yeah, what's up. it's 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 amazing when you can see your kids getting something like that, and then and then you I want I want I want to I want to see what he does, and I support him fully. You know, it's it's just it's a crazy business, and you won't even know about it till you get in. Then it's like, what do I do? Like this is my first time quarterbacking. Definitely wildcat. Definitely. Well, he saw you do what you do yeah. with confidence and with class, so I'm sure he's going to do, do great things. For man. sure. So thanks Thank for coming you. through. Thanks for pulling up. Man, another fire episode. Yo, man, thanks for tuning in to Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I've been your boy, Charlie Wilson TV, man. Y'all keep up, man. Go back and watch the other episodes if you ain't seen them. Cheers. Did you like that? Come on, man. That was a good ass episode, man. Look, you, I don't want you to miss out on the next one. Take a quick minute, hit the subscribe button down below. That way you can get a notification. And you don't want to miss out? You don't want to miss out? I'm looking out for you. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next episode.